India, a land of diversity, a wonderful melting pot of cultures, customs, languages, religions and philosophies. Since ancient times, the subcontinent has been home to contrasting, often conflicting schools of thought like Vedanta, Samkhya, Yoga, Mimamsa, Charvaka and more. Thus, technological achievements based on science and traditions based purely on faith coexisted on this land. Though modern India is a secular state, faith and beliefs play a vital role in the lives of the majority of its citizens. Our patronage of music and arts, the celebration of vibrant festivals, our bond with nature and environmental conservation are all primarily based on traditions passed down through the generations. However, those traditions and practices leave the windows open for mysticism and supernatural to enter our lives. Superstitions and pseudosciences are so common in our culture and day-to-day -day life that we fail to even recognize their harmful effects. This is now a multi-million dollar industry in India with different forms like Vastu, Astrology, Numerology, Pranic Healing and hundreds more. And they earn their fortunes without ever having to manufacture any real products or prove any results. So, at a glance, this business model seems simply unstoppable. But all is not lost. A group of young Indians wearing the armor of science are on a journey to change the course. In this fight against superstition, their weapon of choice is reason. Today, we are at Portafilter in Hyderabad, India's first humanism-themed coffee house. Let us meet the riders and hear their story. Reason or reasoning is associated with understanding things through observation, verifying facts, applying logic and thinking. That has been the way of science and progress. So when we decided to take up this ride to challenge the unscientific practices, exploitation and business based on these pseudosciences, we could not think of a more apt name, Ride for Reason. The ride started from this very coffee house on August 3rd, 2019. The initial plan was an 11-day circuit of 2,500 kilometers across the two Indian states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. We spent weeks in planning the route, awareness sessions, places to rest, meetings to attend, etc. But there was one unexpected aspect that jumped into the scene. 
from the very first day it was raining constantly the entire week literally every beat of our road an unforeseen weather change and floods hit the two states forcing the riders to make a choice either push forward in those difficult conditions or turn around and return to safety their choice was clear we unanimously agreed to ride forward because uh, it was clear in our minds that our journey was not just about uh, making a statement it symbolizes an ideological battle between the scientific method and deep rooted superstitions so we could not let that opportunity slip away or turn into a disappointing failed expedition moreover having a team of responders constantly behind us in the caravan was very reassuring so it was not arrogance but a carefully planned the calculated risk of course safety was certainly the priority i view superstitions and pseudo sciences as the single greatest threat to scientific development and human progress i know when we think of the word superstition we might feel that it is just some silly beliefs around black cats good time and bad time based on astrology talismans on your waist or just changing the english spelling of your name into a ridiculous way based on numerology we would of course feel how can you be so dangerous they are just silly but harmless so in the awareness sessions with students uh, my responsibility during the icebreaker was not just an introduction of the team or speak about the purpose of our visit i wanted to make them understand that uh, when people especially children accept to believe that a normal cat crossing our path or a lizard on the wall could somehow affect us negatively we are making ourselves vulnerable to many more forms of unscientific notions the more a person is willing to believe in such claims the more they lose the ability to differentiate reality and lies because their criteria and rules with which they understand the physical world are compromised my thought was uh, when riding is our passion why don't we do it for a worthy cause but not everything was smiles and fun time to shift gears It would be a lie if I said I am the calmest and most peaceful person. I was really angry on the stage, and I am surprised that not more people are angry at the horrific state of our society because of superstitions. When you read the news of a three-month-old baby beheaded on an open terrace, 
because a tantric told the man that sacrificing a baby during the super blood moon eclipse under the open sky will grant him health and wealth how can one not be angry human sacrifice in the 21st century i am angry and i'm shocked at anyone who is not angry at such a tragedy human sacrifices and witch hunts are not uncommon in india this is a very organized business with a lot of lobbying power and that is the reason they can silence anyone who question and challenge their business practices as we all know they maintain strong connections in elite circles including media and politics but we are determined not to let that fear disarm us of course we have a powerful weapon with us also truth solo science businesses don't work the same way our corporate offices work you cannot file a complaint about their product quality or call a customer service center saying your predictions went wrong or your pyramid hat is not working properly so how do we counter such house business is built on the public's gullibility instead of need well the most efficient and effective way is education and mass awareness When people realize the truth that superstition destroy lives, people are just wasting their money, time, and resources on things that can never possible help them. They will voluntarily let go these pseudo sciences. The public will eventually make the right choice. Throughout the history, we have made mistakes, fought wars. treated each other badly oppressed people of different color or class but eventually we accepted our mistakes worked together to find better ways to live and improved ourselves together at times i hear people complain about their bad phase in life due to their horoscope or zodiac signs i'm surprised what is the point of the bad horoscope when science and common sense had already concluded that horoscope is baseless and unscientific planets don't care about you your moods your relationships your life take control of your own life in india especially in villages people believe in black magic and witchcrafts and there was an example before a couple of years where a man was killed because the villagers suspected that he is doing black magic and witchcraft so as a responsible citizen and as a responsible group babu gogmin humanist and rationalist arena we went to the village village name is terate gudan and we backed the family who lost the person We came across a situation before a couple of weeks when we were about to start the ride. The incident happened in Karnool, where a mother, along with her three months old daughter, have committed suicide just because her family, along with her husband, thought that 
the girl's birth, the three months girl's birth, had gave them a lot of misfortune. Not only this, there are a lot of marriages that are getting disturbed and there are a lot of lovers who are getting apart just because the families are thinking that the horoscope is not getting matched. This is atrocious. And people are still believing in superstitions like Vastu. I don't know whether there is an English word for Vastu. You know, stones that are sold by the anthropology, color stones especially, and they are incurring a lot of financial burden just because of believing these kind of things. It is high time to choose whether we accept the pseudosciences as our heritage or acknowledge the inquisitive and scientific nature of Aryabhatta, Sushruta, Bhaskara as our true culture and heritage. Right for Reason is an extension of our ongoing humanist rationalist movement in India. More than ever, today people from various parts of the world are embracing science and scientific method to observe, analyze and understand the world and the universe. Thanks to the internet and social media, many like-minded individuals from different walks of life are working together in Babu Gognini Facebook group. I had a pleasure of meeting my fellow riders there while working for other awareness campaigns and training sessions. In India, especially in southern part of the country, many organizations like Janavijnana Vedika, Andhra Pradesh Rationalist Association, MANS in Maharashtra, BKRA in Karnataka have been working tirelessly to create scientific awareness, develop rationalism and eradicate superstitions from day-to-day -day life. In the past, eminent leaders like A.T. Kaur, Basava Premananda, Goparaj Ramachandra Rao and Ravipud Venkatadri pioneered the movement to battle exploitation and deception of public in the name of superstitions and beliefs. In the past few decades, the movement is being helped by stalwarts like Narendra Nayak, Babu Gognini and late Narendra Davalkar who have been working closely to bring awareness through mediums like TV discussions, public meetings, lectures in colleges, social media, etc. With their inspiration, we wanted to fulfill the long-standing goal of legislation to protect people against superstitions and pseudo-scientific business practices. With the varied effectiveness, anti-superstition laws exist in a few states like Bihar, Rajasthan, Odisha, Karnataka and Maharashtra. So we are submitting the representation to political leaders and bureaucrats for this legislation in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Since it is a public interest bill, we thought the best way to create awareness and gather support for this law is by going into the people directly. For example, many false claims are used to confuse us by attributing the false glory to our history. Instead of our true scientific achievements and heritage, we must be proud of our ancestors' contribution to human civilization like invention of zero, but not for the false claims like Vimana Sastra or internet in Mahabharata which are anti-intellectuals. After planning the initial roadmap, we reached out to all the members and supporting groups to assist us with setting up the training sessions and meetings in various locations. Though so it was an idea that started in my head, we were able to continuously improvise the plans and made it better mainly because of their support and efforts. We can never forget the kind of affection and support which we have received from our friends. Hundreds of humans came together at every meeting and worked in the background to make Right for Reason successful. And our riders are forever grateful to everyone of you. 
బాబూ గోవింద్ అనే ఫేస్బుక్ గ్రూప్ నుంచి అలాగే ఇండియన్ హ్యూమనిస్ట్ అసోసియేషన్ తరఫున ట్రిప్ బై రోడ్ డాట్ కామ్ అనే సౌజన్యంతో మీ ఈరోజు రైడ్ చేపట్టాము ఈ రైడ్ మొత్తం టోటల్గా ఆంధ్ర అండ్ తెలంగాణ ప్రాంతాలు అట్లాగే ఒక యూనియన్ టెరిటరీ యానాం కూడా కలుపుకొని మొత్తం రెండు వేల ఐదు వందల కిలోమీటర్లు జరుగుతుంది ఈ ర్యాలీ మొత్తం మూఢనమ్మకాలు ఈరోజు సమాజంలో ఎంత విపరీతంగా దారుణంగా పెరిగిపోతున్నాయో ప్రాణాలు పోతున్నాయి చిన్న చిన్న పిల్లలను కూడా నరబలు చేస్తున్నారు ఇంట్లో పోరు తట్టుకోలేక తల్లి కూతుళ్ళు కలిసి ఆత్మహత్య చేసుకునే పరిస్థితికి దాపురించిన సిచ్యువేషన్లో మేము వాటన్నిటికీ స్పందిస్తూ ఈ ర్యాలీ చేపట్టాము వాటన్నిటిని అరికట్టాలంటే ఒక చట్టం కావాలని అలాగే వాటి మీద అవగాహన కలిగించాలని చెప్పి ఈ రెండు వేల ఐదు వందల కిలోమీటర్ల మొత్తం ర్యాలీ చేస్తున్నాము The riders travelled for 13 days and 3,000 kilometres, covered 23 destinations, met dozens of government officials, hundreds of activists and thousands of students, and kindled the fire of science and reason in those young minds. While celebrating the resounding success, the team is also working on new ways to take their message far and wide and the need for legislation. The anti-superstition bill, which the team is rallying for, will be a crucial tool in protecting the public from exploitation in the name of superstitions and pseudosciences. However, the true responsibility is upon all of us to build a generation, a country, a world that has robust immunity against such anti-scientific notions and regressive practices. In other words, it shall be the duty of every citizen of India to develop the scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform.